Model steam engines for beginners, part 38, working on a Chinese built 5 inch gauge locomotive with piping and other problems. I fitted a live steam injector and some fittings which improved this engine considerably. I show the locomotive in steam at the end of the video at Blackgate's Engineering in order to test the injector. Problems with the 5 inch gauge model GWR 14XX steam locomotive. Fitting new check valves and a number 3 injector, then making new piping. Originally, the injector was fitted in this position, and it was too far inboard it was impossible to see what was happening with the injector's overflow. The first job I'm going to do is replace both of the check valves. I'm using Loctite 542 to seal the threads, and as you can see I'm not using very much of it. I temporarily put the pipe back in position, because I want to discuss the piping and the positioning of the piping. I'm going to modify this piece of pipe and remove this one altogether. This is the new piping that I made to connect the injector to the engine. Because the steam union cones to the fittings on this engine are not standard, I removed one of the union cones from the existing piece of pipe and re-silver soldered it to my piping. In this clip you can clearly see the new position for the injector and it's actually visible if you look at the side of the engine. This injector really needs to go between the frames that is between the main frames and the outer part of the frames at the rear of the engine that support the axle boxes for the rear wheels. In the position where the small yellow hand is flashing. I really didn't want to drill holes in this beautiful engine to fit pieces of pipe through. So instead I fitted it as you see in the video. To accommodate the new position for the injector I just had to make a simple bracket to allow me to move the whistle into a position where it was out of the way of the injector. You can clearly see the arrangement in this clip. The new support bracket for the whistle was mounted to the frames using a brass 4BA bolt with a nut. I'm just making sure that the piping is not getting in the way of the brake linkage. The injector, in my opinion, is in a much better position. You can see the water coming out of the injector, and you do need to see this so you can adjust the water feed so that the injector picks up. A quick word about piping. In my opinion, the piping on these engines is far too thin. The wall of the pipe is very thin, the bore of the pipe is good, but when you bend it, it kinks. Thin wall copper pipe is difficult to bend. I'm using 3 16 of an inch diameter thick walled copper pipe, which is the industry standard and it's very easy to bend round corners. And as you can see the bends are tight on this pipe, but there's no kinking whatsoever. These are the two check valves that I've replaced and they are 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch units. Here's a clip of the injector installation filmed from underneath but from the other side, and you can see how neat these pipes are. The bends are very smooth, and there's no crushing of the pipe at the sharpest point. When using these live steam injectors which are amazingly reliable, not only must the piping be made properly, it needs to go directly to the clack if at all possible, so the moving column of water can go straight into the boiler. While on the subject of piping, it's nothing to do with the injector, but the water feed pipe from the tank has been fitted too close to the wheel and the flange has started to wear it away, so I carefully moved it into a better position. So with everything in place, it's time for the steam test, and the first thing to do of course is pump some water into the boiler. The hand pump doesn't feel very good as you're pumping it, but it does put water into the boiler. I really don't like the way it fouls the top cover, you can see it moving in this clip. The entire pump is a little bit too far forward in the internal tank. Before we get onto the steam test properly, I'd just like to show the pieces of piping and associated fittings that we removed from the engine because they didn't work. The kinks are very bad in these pipes, and I can't understand that such a beautiful engine can have piping like this. It really isn't good. And here we have the check valves, and neither of them work. Both of them pass water or air in both directions. For the steam test I'm going to need a water tank. This is a small commercial water tank designed to supply lathe coolant to a small lathe. So I mounted this on a suitable piece of wood and fitted a model type control valve to regulate the flow of the water. After water was pumped into the boiler, we noticed that there was a leak on the water gauge. Carefully tightening it with a spanner made no difference, it still leaked. So we dismantled the water gauge and cut a new piece of glass to the same size as the old piece of glass because the old piece of glass was cracked. And now the water gauge glass doesn't leak and holds water. 
And while on the subject of leaks, as you can see, the manifold's leaking. The pipe to the pressure gauge was badly kinked and it was also blocked with silver solder. So I very carefully drilled out the solder in the ends of the pipe using a number 66 drill. And now the pressure gauge is working. No drips, just that good sound. I have to turn it off because the boiler is now full. I turned up the gain on the camera's microphone so you can hear the sound that the injector should make when it's working properly. The injector worked perfectly and because this water tank is quite small I had to refill it frequently using cold water. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.